Good morning, how's it going? We are out here, just off of uh, Captiva Island, right behind us. So, uh, Fort Myers, Cape Coral area out here. I guess we're technically in Pine Island Sound here between Captiva and Pine Island over there. So, trying to catch a little fish. Trying to see if we can catch some um, trout, for sure. I've caught trout here in the past. Some, um, what, spotted sea trout, technical name, speckled trout, whatever you want to call them. Also trying to catch some redfish. They should be in this area. A little bit of a slack tide right now, so maybe they're turned off, but haven't hooked up any yet. Uh, but sit back, uh, we have had a little bit of trout action, so sit back and watch that, and maybe we'll get lucky and stick a redfish. All right, foul players, I figured I better break in right here so you guys don't get confused and think you hit the wrong channel or something. It's still me, still fight foul play outdoors, but like a lot of you guys, in addition to duck hunting, I also enjoy fishing, as you can probably tell by what I'm standing in front of. Uh, but this time, I uh, doing a little saltwater fishing down in Pine Island Sound outside of Cape Coral, Florida. Something that I've kind of recently started uh, doing and taking an interest in, and I've enjoyed learning about it and, uh, and catching some fish, having su su some success. This was my second trip down there. It was May of this, uh, of this year, 2024. Spent about a week. Only really got one day of footage. I just got lazy and didn't take it out the rest of the days, which was unfortunate because this actually wasn't even my best day on the water, even though I did catch several fish. So leave me a comment below. Let me know if you enjoy this content. If you do, I'll try to produce some more. If you guys don't like it, then I won't, quite simply. Or maybe I'll just make another channel. But uh, hope you enjoy this. Stick around with me till the end, and I'll share some uh, tips with you on the, the, the tools or the tackle that I use to catch these fish, and also, a special tool that I think is worth the money if you want to invest a little bit. So sit back and, and enjoy this day on the water in Cape Coral, Florida. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, I got something. Oh, it might be a trout. It's starting to pull. Oh, did I? No, oh, it's still on there. A little trout. A little baby trout. What do you think, Rosie? Ouch. All right. God. Thank you very much. One down. Well, how about that? Let's see where his big sister is, huh? Oh, shoot. Oh, he got off. Dang it. Is he? Dang. There's beta. There's plenty of fish everywhere. Ah, oh, shoot. Oh, ah. That might just be ticking in the grass, actually.
There's one. That's a better fish, baby. Watch out. No, I don't think he's a... We're still not into keeper size, but... Ow. Come on now. Thank you. Oops, don't want to lose that. That would be a bad day. Oh, shoot. Okay, a little faster retrieve, huh? Okay. Where's the big ones at, Rosie? There's one. Oh, that feels like a better fish. Well, he stopped pulling. What do you think, Rosie? <laughs> Another little bitty trout. Get away from me, you nasty bird. Don't feed the cormorants. Ugh. Come on. Haha, -ha, no food for the cormorant. Run, little trout, run. You bastard, how did you manage that? Son of a gun. That sucks. Gosh, I don't... That sucks. I want to feed the daggum cormorants. Hope you choke on it. See how long these things are we've been catching. God, his mouth's all ripped to shreds. You are yeah, 12 and a half inches, way, way under limit. Come here, sucker. That bird go. Run away. Go. There you go. You're not getting him, bastard. Well, got our first keeper of the day. He's just barely a keeper. But you know what? I promise to like fish tacos. 
So he's going in. God, he's a slimy suck. Ah. All right, let's see if there's any more of those. Ugh, my hands are all fishy smelling now. Faster retrieve seems to be the key today. It's very windy. So I did have to step up in the tackle size. Usually I like to use with these little swim baits, little three and a half inch swim bait. I like the three aught spiral lock hook with an eighth ounce weight but that just wasn't getting it done today so stepped up to a four aught the three sixteenths weight was getting more strikes caught some small ones but uh noticed i was getting a lot of short strikes a lot of fish hitting and not getting hooked up so i switched over to a jig head not sure of the weight i think it's about three sixteenths a little bit heavier and some sartreuse on it it got hit pretty quick. You can see, and I'm using the, uh, there's the jig, it's a nice little sartreuse jig head. Um, and uh, that's the salt strong mulligan in the slam shady color. So let's see if there's another one. I hooked a decent one right before that one. Then I didn't get either of them on camera, which is great. Let's see, a little faster retrieve seemed to draw more attention. We're gonna sit here, we've got the power pole down. We'll sit here for a second. Fan cast around this area. There's quite a bit of sporadic grass. I've actually gone through most of it at this point. I think I have some on my bait. Yep. Let's see. There's a fish. Ah, shoot, did I let him get off? No, he's still on. Come on, don't jump, don't jump, don't jump. That might be another, that's another keeper. Yes. Maybe, yeah, I think so. Then you're an angry cuss. Ah, shit. Oh, watch your teeth. Stop it. I'm a pure keeper because you've been out of the water long enough. Oh yeah, there we go. Just barely a keeper, but he'll make a taco. Uh, man. Closer to the grass a little bit. There's one. small one okay, start to pull a little bit nope. oh shit
Ah, he ain't gonna make it. Yeah, maybe he will. Damn, you guys are slimy. Yeah, he'll be okay. As long as the damn cormorant didn't get him. My hands are all slimy. Oh, there's a bit. Oh, no, just another trout. An angry one, though. Ha. Wish I could just shoot you. All right, pretty fun day, actually. I had a good time. Rosie and I out there in a rented boat. I went on uh, getmyboat.com. I'll put a link to the specific boat down below. Real reasonable price. Nice young man named Randall rented the bro boat, brought it to me at the house we were staying at, came and picked it up at the end of the week. Super nice guy. And I had a great time. It was a, it was the perfect boat for this. Nice uh, 22 foot bay boat with a trolling motor. And if you're going to want to do this fishing, I feel a trolling motor is just almost mandatory. I've done it without. I didn't like it. So what did we use to catch this fish? These fish. So I'll tell you right now, just about everything I'm going to show you, particularly the the baits I used, I got from SaltStrong.com. They're a, they're an online store. They've got a big YouTube presence. So if you're into inshore fishing, go check out the SaltStrong YouTube channel. They even had what they call their Insiders Club, which I actually paid to join. And by doing so, you get a real big discount on all the gear that they sell, plus rods and reels. I'll show you here in a second, uh, as well as some of their online courses, which I have used uh, to, uh, to learn how to go find these fish and, and had good success. And they also have an app for your phone that they call their Smart, Smart Spots app that's got tide charts and locations. It'll show you locations of, of oyster beds and grass beds, and even some areas that they say, hey, these are special hot spots that you need to go check out because they should be good. And they'll even kind of give you a, based on the conditions at the moment, tell you if this is like hot or okay or, or maybe not great. And I did use that app to find some spots. So it's worth uh, the money. It's about a hundred bucks a year, I think, but I have saved more in the discounts I get from buying their tackle than I have paid. And uh, I compared their prices and it's cheaper than I could have uh, driven to Bass Pro Shops and got it for. So that said, uh, let's talk about what I use. So I started off the day with their 2.0 bait in their proprietary slam shady color. Uh, I've had success with this in the past and it did well for me there as well. It's a little three and a half inch swim bait and this slam shady color is kind of a white with silver fleck in it, you know, your basic bait fish pattern. Small little tender mor morsel there. I was started off rigging it because I was over these grass beds with uh, what I call a screw lock, a three aught screw lock hook with a one ounce, uh, one eighth ounce weight on it. This is the Boss Helix hook that they do sell there at Salt Strong. Uh, I've started using that and you may have heard me mention in the video, it's got a lot of short strikes fish hitting it and not getting hooked up. So I said, well, let me switch. So I switched up to these jig heads. Now I didn't get these. I think I did get these at Bass Pro Shops, but this is just an eighth ounce uh, jig head, uh, nothing special. I, I did end up switching uh, later in the day to the Z-Man um, Redfish Eye. It's a little bit, they have the Redfish Eye and the Trout Eye. The Trout Eye has a slightly smaller shank on the hook. I prefer this a little bit larger I think it helped my hookup percentage because I was, if a fish bit, they didn't let go of this one, whereas they did with the screw lock. And these you can get anywhere. The Z-Man stuff, Bass Pro Shops, anywhere has it. But I did get mine through Salt Strong because I get a discount and it, and it made it cheaper. So, and that's in the eighth ounce. And it also helped 
Um, that seemed to penetrate the wind. It was real windy. That helped penetrate the wind a little deeper. I did step up to a slightly larger bait. Again, this is a salt strong bait. It's their mulligan. They call it a mulligan because I don't know if it'll come through. There are these little dimples on it like a golf ball. If you know golf, you know mulligan is a golf term. They say that helps it cast farther. I don't know if it did or not, but I caught fish on it and I had it rigged as well on that eighth ounce uh, jig head, the, the Z-Man redfish eye goes in there quite well. So those are really the two baits that I caught all my fish on. I caught plenty of trout. I caught several every day I went out went, and, and multiple keepers. I even caught um, a nice redfish, keeper redfish, that I did bring home and was delicious. And I caught, uh, I hooked up on several snook. I only landed one. He was only 24 inches. If you've ever caught a snook before, and I hadn't, this was my first time, they will flat pull your arms out of the socket. It was very exciting. They jump, they fight, uh, and I lost four or five that broke me off. I had 20 pound leader on the end. Actually, I stepped up to 30 pound leader and I still had some of them break me off. Uh, they got a real rough mouth and they just, you can tell when they broke me off, I could tell that the uh, line was just terribly frayed and, and abraded and they just they just wore through it. Next time, uh, I'm going to follow the advice of Captain C.A. Richardson, another great YouTube channel. If you've ever seen Flats Class TV, which I think has been going on for 20 years, he has Flats Class YouTube. Great, great YouTube channel. His recommendation is to put about eight inches of a 40 pound bite tippet if you know you're going to be going after snook. So next time, that's what I am definitely going to be doing. Uh, as far as the rod and reel combo, this is a combo that I did get from Salt Strong. It's a seven foot medium action spinning rod. It's their TFO Professional. They frequently sell out of them. And as far as I can tell, I don't think you can get it anywhere else. I really like this rod. It's got a great action. It casts well. Uh, the type of fishing I was doing, I didn't really need high sensitivity. It's not like I'm you know, fishing highly finesse rigs, but I could have done it. And it comes paired, if you get their combo, it comes paired with this Daiwa Fuego 2500 reel. After their discount, I think this whole outfit is about $220. That's not cheap. I, I'm not going to stand here and say, oh, it's a super affordable. Um, but it's by, uh, by far not the most costly rod and reel that you're going to find out there. Certainly not the cheapest. I think this is a good balance if you want to spend a little bit more for nice gear. I think this is a good balance. I'm super happy. I have two of these combos, at least one more of these reels on a different rod, and I'm very, very happy with them. If you're a bass fisherman, this is basically a shaky head rod and reel. This is, and I actually took some of mine with me as well to have spares. If you fish shaky heads, if you know what that is, that's kind of a finesse worm technique in bass fishing. That's pretty much what this is. So if you've already got a spinning rod that you use for those kinds of techniques, and, and you can comfortably land, you know, five, six pound bass, you can use it as well. It may not be as resistant to salt water, but it's gonna get the job done. So that is it. That is my trip to Pine Island Sound, Cape Coral, Florida. I wish I had gotten more footage for you guys, uh, but this is all I have. So if you enjoy it, let me know for sure. Put a, uh, put a comment down there. Let me know your thoughts. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. So if you did, maybe we'll see more in the future. Anyway. Thanks for your time. I appreciate your support. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as always, you know me, I'm Bruce, and you're watching Foul Play Outdoors.